All right, first thing we're gonna do is remove this battery cap right here. So we're just gonna push this tab in. That should pretty much be all. You just take this out of the way here. That comes right off, set that aside. Now we have access to the bolts that we need to take off. So we have some along the edges. We got one, two, three, four. Uh, there's one underneath this one here. There's five. And then we have six and seven. So seven um, nuts that we're taking off. We're gonna start with are gonna be the ones along the edges. These are 10 millimeter nuts that we're gonna use a ratcheting wrench for. So we're gonna start just loosening them all up here. Those I can't fit in with that. Can't fit that one in there either. So I'm gonna use this side here. Just get them loosened. Let's get this one off here. That one was pretty easy too. All right, so we're gonna get the one that's underneath this one. So that one right there. That one we're going to get at the end because we're going to remove this and that one first. And um, we'll be back to get that one at the bottom. Yeah, the four off the edges all off. Uh, that one was easy. That one down there was easy. These two in the middle here, this box is kind of in the way. So when you're twisting them off, you can just push this over out a little bit and you'll have enough room to squeeze them out. Um, this, These things feel like they're going to... So this and this are one piece, but it kind of feels like they're separate. So don't be scared to twist them all the way off. Just be sure to have, you know, your hand or your finger underneath to catch it just in case it falls down. We have the two 13 millimeter nuts in here. We're going to use a um, extension, 13 millimeter and a ratchet. So we're just going to stick it in there. Just break those free. That one was easy. All right. We're going to take those, those off. Two 13s off, set them aside apart from the 10s. Now what we're going to do is get the last 10 millimeter, which is right down there. We're gonna try to move this thing out of the way here, lift it up to give us enough room to get that one down there. So I'm gonna loosen that, take it off, and we'll be back. Some people, this one might be a little confusing because obviously the direction is different than the ones that were facing outwards on these. So this one, you're gonna turn to your left. Obviously lefty, loosey, righty, tighty, but just thought I'd throw that in there so you're not in there with this tight spot messing around and turning it the wrong way. So you're gonna be turning to loosen this way. All right, so I'm gonna get that one Gives us uh, access to move all this stuff here out of the way. Um, that's for the most part. Um, so basically, the, so we can access the PCM. Let me get this light over here. So PCM is right, right there. That, that's, you see, if you can see that red tab, that's one of the connectors. There is a total of three to this harness. And if you can see those two um, little clips or buttons or whatever, that's what's holding on to the PCM. So once we get... Uh, the harness, which is that red tab there, all three of those loosen and taken off. Then we're only going to push on those two buttons or tabs or whatever right there. And that will allow that PCM to be free. So there's uh, one of the wiring harness clips or connectors or whatever you want to call it. So this red tab you push out and then you push this up like that. I've got all three pushed up. Um... So you want to push that black button in the middle after you pull the red tab out. And then this will give you the leverage to pull this up. As you push this all the way to the front, the connector is going to pop itself out. So as we can see, sorry guys, I'm, I'm holding the phone with one hand, trying to pull this thing out with the other. But basically that's going to get pushed all the way forward. That will then release this, pushing it up, and then it'll just easily come out. I'm going to do that for all three and then um, we'll continue with the all video. Three connectors now that are removed. They are color coded. So gray, black, and blue. Um, they were very easy to take off. If you guys saw my previous video on how to do the tune, um, it is a lot more detailed and descriptive. I took more time to do that one. But uh, there is something that I noticed. You don't have to actually, like I said in the previous video, you don't have to take a flathead and loosen up those edges that we talked about it's literally just that red tab and then the uh just pulling that bar forward that's really all you have to do so now let's take a look at the pcm here now that it's all disconnected now we're going to attack those two tabs there and that's super easy push them both in that will remove everything or that's pretty much all that's holding that pcm and then we're going to slide it out from the front here some other people will try to pull them up pull it up from here there's just not enough room there so i just make it easy for myself 
pull it uh, straight down and then turn it so it goes this way and out through there. So let's do that and we'll Sorry be back. I a really bad video here. Again, I'm just working with uh, one hand. So there's the two tabs that we released and I pushed them both in. So now the PCM is actually free. I'm trying to sneak my hand in here so I can show you guys. So now, see this is all that's holding. It was just the clip there and one over there. Push them both in at the same time. This thing releases. Now we are free to pull it off and, and slide voila. it out. There she is. All right. So the uh, PCM or ECM, whatever you want to call it, is out. Now we will get it packaged up and get it shipped to ZZP so that we can get it tuned for E85. And once I get that in the mail, which should be hopefully about a week, um, we will continue this video so that we can get the install of the new tuned PCM again, and at that time we will be adding the E85. Thanks guys, we'll see you soon, well, in about four to five business days. And look what just came in the mail, finally. They actually were pretty quick, I sent everything out <clears throat> uh, Monday, Monday morning and I got everything back today, which is Friday, and I actually even picked up uh, one of these. You guys will need one of these. It is a fuel line disconnect tool. Three eighths is the size. Got one at O'Reilly's for about five bucks. So you'll definitely need that to make the job easier. So let's All begin. Right, first thing you want to do is take this oil cap off, set it aside, take a four millimeter Allen wrench and loosen this bolt right here. Take that off and then we'll remove the engine cover. With the oil cap back on the engine, you want to go ahead and start by removing um, this bracket right here. Just loosen it up with that Allen wrench All right, there. So this one was a four millimeter Allen wrench and then we're just going to remove this clip here from the fuel After line. it's been removed, we're going to um, loosen up this bracket right here that holds those two fuel lines All together. Right, as you guys can see, I removed this retainer clip here. It was connected to that feed line like that. So you just take a flathead and pop it up and it comes right off. Now we're going to go ahead and remove that fuel line. Your uh, fuel line disconnect tool. You're just gonna put it in place right in here. You're gonna push in and disconnect the fuel line. I can't do it because I'm only working with one hand, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that and be back. Okay, I broke it free, but some uh, gas did come out, so you guys might wanna put some rags underneath just to be on the safe right, side. So after that, you wanna reroute your fuel line here just by bringing it in over this bracket. Okay, just keep now it right there. we're gonna take the bracket, one of the long bolts here, and the sensor itself, and we're gonna Put this in here just like that okay now that we got the bracket on i will mention that that allen wrench is actually a five millimeter versus the four that we used to take it off but anyway now that we have that on we're going to mount these two line them up to that and put that right Next on we're going to remove these caps here and we're going to connect the fuel lines this one's going to get connected right onto here and then we're going to take the one that zzp supplies here and we're going to put that in place just like that let me do that and i'll be back all right, so I took this off. Uh, I was held on by, we got four bolts here that were nuts that were held on by eight millimeters. We got one right here that was held on by 13. And I believe this one was also held on by 13. You gotta have a deep socket to take that one off though. Um, and then they pretty much all just come off. The one tip I'll give you is keep the one that is connected along the edge right here. You wanna keep that connected so you have uh, something holding this down while you unscrew all the other nuts off of here. And then um, once you take them all off, then you can take the one off the edge and pop this right off. Next, we're gonna remove the cap off of the fuse box here. So let's remove go ahead and do this, that. This uh, fuse box, you just lift off on here. And then if you look on this end right here, it is attached to this little bar. So you're just gonna pop that right out of the spot there. And All right, right, once you have that cover removed, there's uh, four tabs along those two ends right there. And then two over here you wanna remove. And to do that, you're pretty much just gonna take a little flathead. You're gonna pry out like that and pull this part up and that'll break those free. Before, these two will be free. Pull them up and take this off. Once you have that removed, this is what you're gonna be left with. We're gonna pry this one out and uh, instructions say it's really sensitive. So we're gonna take a flathead, stick it somewhere in here and pry it up It slowly. was really, really easy. So you don't really need much force. All I did was put the flathead in here and popped out that way and it came came off right away. Pulling the first one apart, I actually realized how to correctly do it. So you wanna put your flathead right in here and just barely poke it out. That's all the force you need. And then this actually slides right out like that. So you don't have to pry it up like I did on this first one. 
actually tells you not to do that so be really careful with that all broken off and loose you got uh two clips right there we're going to remove so we can take this box well, now off. that we have that uh taken off here now we're going to go ahead and connect the wiring harness to the uh e85 center ground and connect it to this uh strut here you can see it's in there we put it underneath that screw we're going to take one of the three uh plugs from the pcm the blue one and we're going to uh, remove this top cap by removing or releasing that tab there and the one on the other yeah, side. You're gonna remove this cap really carefully by prying the ends here. And you gotta be really careful, but prying little by little on each end until it comes off and then you're able to take All it right, off. All right, this is about far the hardest part is finding pin 38, which we have. Um, we already removed the little clip, but if you could see this blue wire, it's the one that's right next to it. And that's where the pink one is gonna get slid into. So we're gonna install that in there and be, be right back. We're gonna put this blue cap back on there. We put that together, we put the PCM back in the vehicle to continue. After you put together the whole PCM with the wiring harness, you're going to uh, take the X1 plug, which uh, you can refer to steps 10 and 11 from the ZZP manual. And then this thing was pushed in here. There was a yellow tab in there. We just pushed it out and this whole thing just came sliding out like that. So next we're gonna um, plug in the orange Wire. All right, once you have the orange one um, put into that location there, which is pin 32, you push this yellow pin back in. You want to make sure that the whole, you don't see anything silver or from that little wire tip. So make sure everything's in there Then push the yellow tab back in. Make sure everything is wired the same way so you don't, you know, like you got everything going the same direction. So you don't have anything twirling with each other. Put all of these back in place. They don't, they don't snap on from the top. You want to slide them in and then they'll pop right into place on all of them. So be very right, careful. Put the fuse box back on there. You wanna apply the fuse that ZZP provides in the appropriate spot, which is in the guide. All right guys, so I got everything put back together. It's all done. I didn't record the end of it just because um, when I was putting the fuse in the fuse box that ZZP sent, it was actually broken. <clears throat> but um, luckily my ATS had some spares here and I just put one right in there. So the fuse should be in between this 10 and 20 here, and it'll be a, uh, a short 10. So we plug that in there and then put everything back together. And we did test run it and it runs amazing. You can definitely feel the difference. I have, uh, <clears throat> sorry guys, I'm a little sick, but if you've been following my, my page or my videos, you would see that I added all of uh, ZZP stage one which is the uh, cold air intake, the tune, and the downpipe. I also added the larger throttle body, and now we did the E85. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and learned how to um, add the E85 sensor to this. And hopefully you guys are willing to try because it, it is definitely worth it. All right, so that's it for the video. You guys stay tuned for more. God bless.